In a previous lecture, I said that we could construct market demand by just adding together the demand for all the different individuals in that market. Now this is easy enough to do conceptually, but let's think about how we can do this both graphically and algebraically and how we can avoid one important pitfall in this process. To construct market demand in this way, we use a process called horizontal addition. Here I'm going to do an example, and you can follow along if you download the PDF called horizontal addition under the videos section of my website. Let's start with a simple example about the market demand for candy. In this problem setup, we're going to be talking about Julia Child, her daughter, and her husband, and how much each of them like candy, and how much candy they, in fact, demand. We're going to think about, given these individual demands for candy, how much does the market demand if we assume that the market just consists of these three participants? So you look over here, we have three different demands. Let's just say the first one is Julia's demand, the second one is her husband's demand, and the third one is her daughter's demand. So given this, what do each of the individual demand curves look like? And I've plotted them here. You'll remember that it's fairly easy to construct demand curves if you know that they're straight lines. You can just go through and say, if we know that the quantity is zero, what's the price that corresponds to that, and get your intercept here and then get your intercept on the q-axis, where if you know the price is zero, what quantity corresponds to that, and then just connect the dots. So these three demand curves share an interesting feature, namely that the maximum willingness to pay for that first unit, or that first tiny little bit of candy, is 20 for each individual. Now, in a lot of cases, this will be different for different people, but we just made this slightly simpler here to illustrate an important point. Like I said, to get the market demand, we just sum up all the individual demands. You can see how we do that here. We'll say the market demand, represented by a capital Q, is just Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3. Just plug in what that actually means in terms of price and add them together, and we get that our market demand is equal to 460 minus 23p. So what does that look like graphically? Well, again, we could just plot the market demand curve. If we know that our quantity is zero, we say that that's at the point where 460 minus 23p equals zero. If we go through and solve for p, we see once again that p, in fact, is equal to 20. And if we know that p is zero, we go through and we notice that our quantity that corresponds to a price of zero is, in this case, 460. Unfortunately, the world's not always as simple as we like it to be, so let's do another example that illustrates a very important point. Now again, if you look at the handout, this time we're going to be talking about two different groups of people, happy people and sad people. And we say that we're talking about the demand for smile buttons in the example, but that's kind of dumb, so let's just keep thinking about candy. So let's say that this is the demand for candy for happy people, and sad people. You'll notice here that A, happy people like more candy. Maybe that's why they're happy. You'll also notice graphically that when we plot these two demand curves, that the maximum willingness to pay for happy people for candy is now greater than that of sad people. Well, why is this specifically important? Well, it turns out we get a little bit of a strange situation when we try to just go through and blindly add these two demand curves together to get the overall market demand. So let's think about what happens. Think about why the straight addition becomes somewhat problematic in this example. If we were to just add the demand curves together, we would say that the total market quantity is equal to the quantity demanded by happy people plus the quantity demanded by sad people. Just add them together and we would get this equation that quantity is equal to 400 minus 15p. So, okay, that sounds good. We'll go over here and graph that guy, and that looks like this blue line here with an intercept on the p-axis of 26 and 2 thirds and an intercept on the q-axis of 400. But let's think about what this actually means. Let's hypothetically plug in a price of 20 and see what happens. 
If we plug 20 into this equation, we get that the market demand is 100. That seems fine. So this market demand is comprised of both the demand for happy people and the demand for sad people. Technically, the demand by happy people and the demand by sad people. So for the happy people, when price is 20, their quantity demanded is 200. Okay. But then it gets problematic over here. Because we say at a price of 20, if we just plug 20 into this demand curve, we get that the quantity demanded by sad people is negative 100. You can't really demand negative of something. I suppose if you really wanted some sort of interpretation, you could say, well, if your demand is negative, then you'd be willing to pay someone to take it, or you'd want to sell something, or whatever. But in this context, it's pretty much nonsensical. So we need to correct for this in some way, because we don't actually have the sad people subtracting 100 units from the overall market demand. You'll notice that the maximum that sad people are ever willing to pay is 10. So you'll notice that for prices that are greater than 10, we only have happy people buying. At prices lower than 10, we have both happy people and sad people buying. And we need to account for this when we're doing our horizontal addition. Here, we can write this as follows. We can say that our total market quantity is just equal to the quantity demanded by the happy people, which is 300 minus 5p, if the price is greater than 10. And then once the price falls below 10, we have both groups purchasing. So we say if price is below 10, we have both the happy people and the sad people buying, and we get a demand of 400 minus 15p, which is what we had when we added the two demand curves together before. In order to account for this graphically, we need to think about each part of the demand curve separately. So we said for prices above 10, the demand was equal to the demand for happy people by themselves, so our total market demand just follows the original happy people demand curve. And then at prices 10 or below, we have to add in the demand of these sad people here. Well, you can do this by just plotting the point and saying, well, at a price of exactly 10, what happens? And it doesn't matter which equation you plug this into, whether it be the total 400 minus 15p, or the original demand for happy people by themselves because the two different parts of the curve come together at that point. And you'll notice if we plug in a price of 10 here, we get a result of 250. And if we plug in a price of 10 here, we also get a quantity of 250. That corresponds to this point here where we have a little bit of a dog leg in our curve or a kink. We can think about where we go from here by noting that if the price is zero, our total demand is 400 because we're using this curve here. So then you can take this pivot point here and just connect the dot to the point down here, and we get a curve that, while not linear overall, is in fact piecewise linear. So the important thing to remember when doing horizontal addition is that while for the most part it's pretty simple algebraically, you have to take into account the fact that no group or no individual can actually demand a negative number of something. So you have to make sure to identify which regions of your graph the parties are actually having positive demand and account for that in your math.